The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 10th, the Magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead, send me an email. Now, you send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, since if you're inside our Tiger's Den, and why aren't you, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you get all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 112. S&P's down 31. NASDAQ's off NASDAQ 100, 145. Russell's down 12. Semis are off 100. That's four and a quarter percent. Trendy's down 14. Gold's off 35. That's a little over 2%. Silver down 69. That's three and a half percent, three and four tenths percent. Lights recruiters off 69 cents, down three quarters of a percent. Natural gas off six pennies. There is nowhere to hide. Well, I take that back. You can always hide inside the U.S. dollar index. I do have a 10 minute delay, but it's up 40 cents. Trade out at 113.08. Eight. But let's begin the day by what? Well, our first question is from Nicholas, who wants to take a look at the SMHs. Since they're getting trashed and thrashed, why don't we go take a look at them first? Then we can go back, take a look at equity futures, things along those uh, uh, lines. So let's begin by taking a look at the SMH. We can see on a daily time frame here, Nicholas, that today's close appears that it will close below a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom forming on September 30th. That low out there is 185.11. We're trading out at 186.67. A close below 185.11 negates that signal. Now, we can't see a Rhodes momentum indicator signal has been triggered. What that requires would be a bullish reversal candle. When the SMH is topped, it was a Rhodes momentum indicator top. If you're not familiar with that pattern, you should be. I'd love you to be. Just go sign up for Mastering Probabilities. If you do for 29 days, it costs you Zippo. And you're going to get an education of a lifetime where I condense basically thousands of hours into one little hour segments out there. So they're worthwhile. But in any event, uh, Nick, I, if this pattern here fails, that says we have lower price. Now, lower price to where? That was really, in essence, I believe your question. Well, we should read this question. It goes, good morning, Steve. Would you please go over SMHs? Where's support? Around 174. Would you also also go over the, IW, the IWM support and resistance and the TD9 counts? It's always thanks for everything you do. So with regard to support levels out here, if we pull this weekly time frame chart back just a tad at 170.46, that is a TD9 count breakout level. So likely that is the next target to the downside. You are in bar number eight on a weekly basis. This says that a TD9 count bottom could form between this week and two weeks out. I'm not saying that it will. I'm saying that it could. But right now, the next area of support, not on a daily time frame, but on the weekly time frame, is at 170.46 level. Or it could be, and Nick, you can draw this on in your charts out there, a little uh, descending price channel out there. It could be targeting the bottom of that. Where is that? It just depends on when we get down there. That could be in the 150s, though, easily. But the first answer to your question is 170.46. TD9 counts 
We're in bar number eight on a weekly. On a daily, we're only going to be maybe in bar number two out here. On the monthly, it's bar number nine. But now this will not complete until the end of October. And even if it is bar number nine, it could be November slow that could identify in the SMHs a, a TD9 count bottom out there. So, Nick, uh, as far as what else um, is it that you needed out here? What was the IWM? And, and also, by the way, let's just, let's let's do this here. So you're down about not you, but the SMH are down four percent. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart right now, we'll see that it blew right through a TD9 count bottom. So not a good uh, not a good pattern out here, and is suggesting a lower price. I see a little bit of a bounce right now, but nonetheless, you've got a pattern that got negated. This just looks like a little bit of a counter trend relief out here, but otherwise, the SMHs appear to be heading lower out there. You want to look at the IWM, so we'll do that. We'll throw that up on our screen out here as well. Again, you're looking for support and resistance. Now, the IWM has not taken out its uh, September, its June lows. Uh, yeah, it has not taken out its June lows out here. Uh, at least I don't believe it has. No, it has not. June lows all the way back here. But what it did do is it recently formed a TD9 count bottom. Did that on September the 27th out there. And that took price right up to resistance, which was in the center of its bullish structured profile. Because that profile had formed above price, the center became the area where a counter trend move to the upside would end. That's, in fact, what has occurred. And on a daily basis, price is below that red oscillator and change line. That suggests that price wants to go target this TD9 count bottom at September 26th, September 27th level. That's really being confirmed. And as far as TD9 counts, bar number two today, likely. Don't know until the session closes. On a weekly basis, price is below the bottom of its weekly profile, below its red oscillator and change line. That is not a bullish scenario, so that suggests lower price. And on the monthly chart, you do have a TD9 count bottom. That pattern will get negated with a close below 162.78 during the month of October, or really any month after that as well. So that's what we've got going on here for the IWM. Nicholas, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Oh, man, I'd love to uh, take this call here. Uh, it's my daughter who just had a baby. Uh, I'm going to take it here. Hey, Shay, I'm I'm doing the radio show right now live, but I took the call anyways. I love you. And um, I'll give you a call. Can we talk after the show? You got it. Okay, bye. All right, so there we go. Uh, now, she was in labor, folks, since, uh, um, well, so Friday night, Friday late night, maybe 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I sent her a, a little text, said, are you seeing what I'm seeing, which was a, a full moon <laughs> that was on the horizon. And uh, she wasn't really due until uh, late next week, but I said, and she was born on a full moon, so I said, it's going to be the uh, full moon. And sure enough, it was. It was this morning, 5.33 a.m., nice, healthy uh, baby boy out there. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get back. We've been, you know, texting and everything back and forth, but... Um, uh, and she's up she's up in the Atlanta uh, area. So uh, uh, anyways, I'll get back in touch with her. So back to uh, back to the charts out here. So the IWM, I think we covered that out here. So I think we got everything that you were looking for, uh, Nick. But if not, write back to me and I'll make sure that we get that uh, information. So we're going to go to a break here. We get back from this break. I see some requests out here to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. So that's a good opportunity for me to actually reset up the uh, system out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's off 78, S&P down 26. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. So the charts that we've got up on our screen right now, the U.S. dollar index up on top, uh, the four panels out there, and down below is the uh, euro out here. And uh, this is a request coming in from uh, Coda. So, Coda, you want the good news or the bad news? Let's go with the uh, news news out here. Let's just take a look at the yearly charts out here. Now, it's not often that we get to talk about a yearly A to B equals CD up pattern out there. But yet that is exactly what we're taking a look at when I take a look at the uh, charts out here for the U.S. dollar index. Obviously, the U.S. dollar index is the best performer, or one of the best performers this year out here. And uh, there's nothing to suggest that it won't continue to move higher. Now, although this doesn't show the retracement level uh, code, both you and I can see that this is not a 0.618 retracement. I don't know if that's a 0.382 or it's between a 0.382 and a 0.5, but it is less than a 0.618 retracement. When you get that, you typically get more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. So the one-to-one -one is going to take us back to the 2,000 highs out there. But odds favor, the U.S. dollar index is going to go on and make a new all-time high eventually. But at a minimum, what we have here is we have a confirmed A to B yearly, A to B equals CD to the upside with regard to the U.S. dollar index. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here, it's really confirming that same momentum message out here. What I mean by that is was a TD nine count pattern that formed inside the U.S. dollar index. That pattern had completed in May of 2022. And that pattern lasted for all of one month out there, basically a sideways hiccup move. When you see that, that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. And that's what we have. We're only in bar number six as we speak right now. So from a monthly standpoint, this has got three to four months to go to the upside before it would generate at least a intermediate term topping signal. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, uh, even though we've got bar number nine working this week, Price has to take out bar number seven this week or next week in order to gener generate a weekly TD nine count top out there. And on the daily time frame, there's that Rhodes momentum indicator signal. But price, as you can see, is back above its green oscillator and change line. What that means, Coda, a green oscillator and change line tells you you have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So therefore, even though the daily has a topping pattern, I would consider this to be neutral. 
I would consider this to be neutral to bullish because you have that rising price oscillator above zero. Of course, the U.S. dollar index is going to be affected by the currency pairs that make that up, the euro, which is one of them. And CKP says, I want to take a look at the euro out here. Well, the euro is basically toast out there. We can't call it, well, I guess we could call it French toast. Just as we took a look at the yearly, whoops, that was the wrong screen. Well, that happened, but it did. Here is the yearly A to B equals CD price projection out there. So there's your A to B point. All I'm going to do here is take that same line. I'm going to copy it, paste it. As soon as I can get uh, access to it, we'll move it to the uh, downside out there. So what the euro is telling us is that this is, this is headed back to its lows from 1985. And it's got a long way to go. Now, there is some support out here back in the 2000 area. But again, you've got that confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. Chances are the euro headed back to the 1985 level or lower out there. And that 1985 level in the 55 cent range is what it looks like on my chart out there. No reason for us to take a look at it. As far as the monthly time frame, no bottom signal here. So that suggests lower price. Just the opposite, really, of the U.S. dollar index, even though there's uh, four other currency pairs that make up the uh, basket. This shows bar number seven. Uh, if uh, price takes that out, then you could get, and I say take that out, I mean this week or next week, you could get a TD9 count bottom out there. The daily time frame for the euro, much like the daily time frame for the U.S. dollar, has got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Well, the euro has a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom out there. But price is back below its red oscillator and change line. So the exact opposite of a green. This tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are bearish conditions. So that's what I see when we take a look at... Um, I take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index code. I hope that that helps you out. Um, what I'm going to do here is close this chart out. And then I've got just a little bit of housekeeping here. I'll just take just a moment to uh, do this. My apologies. Uh, but in order to get the proper uh, data flow out here, I had to make some changes because of the data feed that I actually have for the U.S. dollar index, which is really coming from eSignal versus uh, where I get my other data feed that we take a look at for uh, futures contracts. Okay, so Stevie's got those set up. Uh, Coda had also wanted to take a look at the NDX100. Coda, we're going to take a look at the NQ. I hope that that is okay with you. And if not, I expect that you'll tell me. So we're going to get these charts here populated. Or did Stevie hit the wrong button? Stevie hit the wrong button. Bummer. All right, so um, yeah, I'm a little tired. Kind of been up most of the uh, evening keeping in touch with uh, Atlanta headquarters on my uh, son-in-law just to, um, you know, understand what was going on. In any event, if you just give me a moment here, well, let's go do, let's go do this. Let me uh, change pages here and because uh, we can always take a look at uh, something while I go ahead and take care of that housekeeping. So it was the uh, it was the NDX 100 that um, that code had asked about. Let's take a look at the bigger picture out here, Coda. So let me do that. Um, and I can do that this way. So we take a look at the NDX 100. Here's what you and I know as we speak, and that is this. So we just took a look at a large. Now, this is a monthly chart, not a yearly chart. But this is the monthly chart here, and we take a look at the A to B equals CD down pattern that is uh, present. What this tells us, because we did close below the June lows, we did that in September. And so what that set up, what the heck is going on here? What that set up is the potential for this large A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, the first price projection level, should this come to fruition out here, is at 79.93. 79.93 is the one-to-one. -one. The retracement here is a 46% retracement. Price is along the inside left of the C to D line. If that continues, Coda, this suggests more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D to the downside out there. And that could get you into the 6435 area. So that's the bigger picture. We took a look at the bigger picture of the euro, the bigger picture of the dollar. Here are the bigger pictures of the indices out here. The only one not closing below the June lows out there has been the Russell 2000. The Dow most certainly has. And it's one-to-one -one price projection, 26,982. One-to-one one point two seven two uh, two is a 24,996 level. The S&P, it's 3143 and 2822 to the downside. Again, bigger picture out here. The semis, 1405. We took a look at other sets of charts. We didn't take a look at the larger A to B equals CD pattern. So 1405 is the one-to-one. -one. 
948 is the one to 1.272. The trannies, they could be targeting 9802 or 8306 out there. So that's the bigger picture as to what's going on. With regard to the play-by-play -play out here with George Kell, let's go take a look at the NQ and kind of see what's going on in the short-term time frame chart. If we begin with a 10-minute time frame, what you'll see out here, that's your bottom right panel. You can see a nice TD9 count uh, bottom that formed here at 1110. What price is doing is what it should do when it makes a bottom pattern, get up and test its oscillator and change line. It has done that. 10,988 10, basically. Now, if price can take that out, it's got at 10,998, the bottom of its profile. That is the level on a 10 minute basis, again, play by, play by play here, that it needs in order to go ahead and try to make this a double. What I mean by a double is get up to the next profile level. That's an 11029 out there. But right now, all the price has done is just a little bit of a relief after a short-term bottom signal, and it's dealing with that resistance. That resistance is that red oscillator on change line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the NQ out here, which, uh, you know, was given the signals earlier, and maybe it still is giving the signals uh, of at least a rally attempt. Uh, they were the sets of charts here that uh, that had done that. So we're not looking at Apple right now, but just so you know, Apple has pulled back, has tested and rejected the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that profile is 139.39, so that's the level to be watching. It's trading back into last uh, Monday's uh, swing point of October 3rd, which had volume there of about 114 million shares. So far, in the first two hours of trading, you've done 28 million. So let's call it 30 times uh, two and a half. Um, you know, it's... Uh, 
you get to maybe a hundred. It looks like it's a little bit lighter volume. Nonetheless, so knowing that Apple held support. And if we combine that with the daily time frame for the NQ having a buy the D point pattern, again, that's the lows from October 3rd out there. And then we take a look at a five hour chart. It actually completed a TD9 count bottom at uh, nine o'clock this morning. Now, if price closes below that low, that this candle here does not complete till 2 p.m. So that TD9 count remains in effect until 2 p.m. But it closed below 10,986, even Stephen negates that signal. TD9 count pattern is also on the four hour time frame chart. Again, 10,986, uh, and then that here was forming at the breakout level of support. But right now, that area is under pressure. Now, this candle here closes at um, 2 p.m. Well, another 2 p.m. candle, four-hour chart. The two-hour time frame chart also with a TD9 count bottom. Now, this candle closes at noon. And so, again, it closed below that 10,986 level, negates that signal, which suggests lower price. If price closes back above that by 12 noon, 29 minutes from now, then we should see at least another rally attempt. Not a bottom bottom, a rally attempt out there. So it's really the NQs that I would pay attention to. We can take a look at Apple. Let's do that here real quickly. Let me get these other charts up on the screen. Let me get to that tab. And we've got the IWM, but momentarily, we'll, we'll, as soon as this here populates, we'll change this over to Apple, just so we can see what it is uh, doing. AAP, oh man, this is a bummer. Okay, so Stevie's Okay, that's not going to work. So Stevie's going to have to uh, jettison this. That's a bummer. After uh, six minutes to go in the show, so I've got to reboot that whole thing. Um, and uh, that's what I will do. So it'll take just a uh, take a bit. So now what I want to do then is go to game plan B. Does Stevie have a game plan B? He always has a game plan B, or he tries to. But uh, Hector writes in, and that's part of the game plan. Hector writes in, Steve-O, congrats. Oh, thank you. Happy full noon, perfect. Occidental support, please. So with regard to Occidental Petroleum, what we're going to do here right now, Hector, is go to my black background chart. So let me change the screens out here. And what we're going to look at, I can't give you the uh, oscillator and change line levels, but we can take a look at an Occidental Petroleum. It's going to be uh, where is this trading in relationship to profile levels, daily, weekly, and monthly. And uh, as soon as I can, I will get the... Uh, I will get the other uh, system up and going. Let me just check on one thing out here. Maybe I can get that rolling here pretty quickly. But with regard to Occidental Petroleum, what you can see out here, and I'm really multitasking, uh, you've got uh, price trading below. It's got a brand new profile that is forming today out here. The top of that profile, resistance, Hector and Patty, 7088. Price is just a bearish structured daily profile. And so it closed below the center of that, which is 67.39. We're trading at 67.18 would suggest to move all the way back to 6157. So that's what the daily time frame chart is communicating to us. The weekly time frame chart shows just a big old consolidation basically between profile levels, those being 5378 to the south and 7179 to the north. Last week, price got up to the 7204 level, again 7179 being resistance the weekly or the monthly time frame chart also showing resistance at the top of its profile, and that is at uh, 69.24. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing here rolling. Yeah, so far so good. Uh, we're going to switch uh, screens out here. We're going to give the additional information that Hector was looking for on Occidental Petroleum, and that would have been uh, TD9 counts as well as the oscillator and change line. So as this populates, we'll have that momentarily. Hector, in the oscillator and change line, which recently changed colors, is its price target, and that's at the 65.55 area. Again, that number's going to change as price moves up and down. If price is able to tag that level, reject that level, move higher, that would actually be a bullish message and could be a signal to us that Occidental Petroleum is going to form an A to B equal CD to the upside. Wait a minute, Steve. Oh, you just told me it's headed to 6157. So this set of charts here does not show the new profile that is, in essence, going to take effect today out there. But we do have this additional information. Even knowing that this new profile was supported at 6157, Stevie would still respond by narrating the chart the way that we just did, which is that oscillator and change line really becomes its price target. On a weekly basis, not much additional information to uh, share with uh, you here. So, Hector and Patty, thanks for the kind note. And uh, you have a, a magical Monday. Uh, thank you as uh, well, uh, Nicholas. Uh, Mike writes in uh, from Portugal. Uh, Mike, uh, did, uh, take your pick. 
Uh, very cool. Okay. Uh, thanks. So thank you, M Squared. Okay, so no other requests here. I don't believe there was anything inside the Tiger's Den, but on Friday, one of our Tigers had asked to take a look at SNAP, S-N-P, uh, S-N-A-P. It was actually S-N-P inside the Tiger's Den that wanted to take a look at SNAP. So let's go take a look at uh, that here. Just kill a little bit of time. Then we'll go take a look at something else, I do, although I do think there is another request out here. Um, let's take a look at SNAP. What SNAP is doing right now is trading below the bottom of its daily profile S&P, but it's pulling back and testing its oscillator and change line. A close below that level, that level is 1041, where 1044 would then suggest price moving back and testing that October 3rd swing point. Nothing really else to show, share with you on the uh, weekly or the uh, monthly uh, time frame out there. So uh, Peter in Park City wanted to take a look at the 30 year on all time frames out there. So we can do that for you, Peter. So if, give me a moment here. We'll go over to uh, that set of uh, charts. That set of charts here will populate. This will show us our monthly, weekly, daily, and then some of the intraday charts out there. So what we know about on a monthly basis is the month of September was a TD9 count bottom. Of course, what that means, that price has to continue to close above on a monthly basis, the level of 123.30. We're trading at 123.27, three ticks below it right now. Of course, it is only October 10th out there, so too early to say. But if price does close below that, that really just supports that yearly A to B equals CD down pattern that we were taking a look at, uh, Peter, out here. So that's the monthly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart uh, is going to form bar number nine this week. Price uh, is now gotten below bar number seven. So this could form a weekly TD9 count bottom between this week and next. There's also Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal triggered. That really means what it needs is a bullish reversal candle to confirm some type of bottom. If we take a look at the daily time frame, it did form a buy the D point and TD9 count bottom. That will get negated with today with a close below 123.30. So on the monthly chart, uh, you know, it still maintain that TD9 count, but uh, starts to really kind of uh, get this suspect when a daily takes out that uh, swing level. On an intraday basis out here, Peter, I don't see anything other than a 60-minute time frame, an hourly time frame chart, that isn't bar number 8 right now. Bar number 9 will not complete until 1 p.m., uh, and then the bar following bar number 9 is 2 p.m. So you could get a short-term bottom signal that forms between now and uh, 2 p.m. out there, but nothing that's going to suggest that we've got some kind of major bottom in the 30-year Treasury, at least not the way that the chart patterns are present as we speak right now. So thank you very much for the uh, request out there and your kind wishes as well. And uh, SNP's got a uh, double. He wants to take a look at EQT. So we're going to do that for SNP inside our uh, Tiger's Den as soon as we're back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the uh, charts for gold up on the uh, screen out here. The daily is the longest time frame that I'm showing right now on the daily time frame chart. What you'll notice here is a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom. That indicator, uh, that bottom formed, it was a TD9 count as well. The TD9 count completed on September 27th. On the uh, following day, that completed Rosemontum indicator bottom. That took price right after resistance or the resistance zone, the top of its uh, TD9 count breakdown area at 1742.90. If we take a look at the, and now price is pulling back, it's below the oscillator and change line, uh, likely going to target uh, one of the two uh, profile levels out there. Those profiles are on 1668, 1645. If we take a look at a five hour time frame chart, this just blew through a TD9 count pattern. Now, again, this five hour bar does not complete till 2 p.m., so it could be too early to call, but it looks to me like gold wants to go target 1666. Is that the devil? I don't know. If we look at the four-hour time frame chart out here, you are in bar number eight of a TD9 count. That will complete at 2 p.m. That says that between 2 p.m. and sometime early this evening, the four-hour chart could go on to form a TD9 count bottom, perhaps around the TD9 count breakout level, 1667. The two-hour chart, no bottom in sight. The 60-minute chart, no bottom in sight. The 30-minute chart, no bottom in sight. The 15 and the 10 do have some roads momentum indicator signals that have been triggered. Price been unable to uh, get above that red oscillator and change line, so that's not much of a relief rally doll. So gold does look like it wants to head lower out there. What happens if it takes out that roads momentum indicator bottom from just a couple of weeks ago? So that is a great question. And to answer that question, since I know somebody had it out here, we'll go switch panes, window panes, that is. We'll go to the black background chart. So we've got some longer-term time frames. And here I'm using my synthetic contract. So sometimes profile levels or pricing might look a little bit different. But we can see at that 1645 level, the bottom of the daily profile. 1641.90 is the bottom of the weekly profile. 1603.90 is the bottom of the monthly profile. And if those levels fail... Then the next profile area of support would take us to the quarterly time frame. It is bullish in structure and is between 1467 and 1542. Those are areas that cannot be ruled out. But right now, price would have to first crack through those other levels of profile support in order for that to come to fruition out there. We've got a request from uh, SNP. SNP, thanks for being my wingman out here. He wants to take a look at Tesla, TSLA. Uh, Tesla had a nice little uh, bounce earlier this morning on its 30-minute time frame chart, which ran right into resistance, the bottom 
of that profile. So let's go see uh, what it is doing as we speak right now. Now, this on a 30-minute basis, when I pointed that out inside the Tiger's Den, was because it had formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom. It did so via the use of a key reversal bar. A key reversal bar is where the current bar exceeds both the low and high of the prior bar. That's step number one. Step number two, you must be in an extended condition. Well, I can guarantee if there's a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal present, it is in an extended condition. And number three, you've got to close one tick in the opposite direction in this case here to the upside it did that and while doing that it also ran right into the top of, or the bottom of that profile now somebody out there might say wait a minute stevie you've taught me the bottom of the profile is support where bars are lined up and that is absolutely correct however sometimes support can become resistance and when that happens is when price closes below that level now what we can see is price made its way up there it has certainly found itself as a resistance area the pattern remains in effect out here snp and so with price above the oscillator and change line, what Tesla may be doing is making another run for the 22708 area. That's what's going on on the very short-term time frame. Of course, that's using a 30-minute chart. If we look at the daily time here for Tesla, not looking good. Why? Because it negated a TD9 count bottom. It did that uh, three or four days ago. So it is heading back to the uh, lows from May. The low from May or the swing point looks like it may be the May 24th level which did volume of about 89 million shares. Today so far, in just a couple hours of trading, this has done 36 million shares. So this is moving lower with some volume. So a Tesla should do, hasn't made its way there to the swing point, but it should target that May 24th swing point. That's the daily time frame signal. If we look at the uh, weekly time frame out here for Tesla, we can see that price had made its way back to its TD9 count breakout level, never formed a TD9 count bottom. But it may be targeting, this suggests a target of the 209 area. So it gets us back to what we were looking at on that daily time frame. And on a monthly basis, what Tesla has is potential support at its bullish structured monthly profile. And S&P, that's in the 205.54 level. So you've got a little bit of a relief rally going on. Uh, won't mean a whole lot unless uh, price can close above 230.83. You're trading at 223 and change out there. In odds favor, that what Tesla will do will go target that 227.08 level. So I hope that help can help you out. Peter wanted to take a look at the advanced decline oscillator. Let's go do that for, oh, no. Did I do all the Tesla charts? I did. And I left it on the black background chart. Shame on Stevie. Here's those charts. I'll just open them real quickly out there. So here's the May 24th level that Tesla's likely headed to on the daily time frame. You can see on the weekly time frame, the TD9 count breakout level. And that's at the uh, 209.08. And here you can see the bullish structured monthly profile for Tesla, 205.50. There's a 30-minute chart. There's the bottom of the profile, 227.08. My apology, S&P, for not having those charts for Tesla up on the screen as I went through them. The New York Stock Exchange Advanced Decline Oscillator. Let's go change back to that uh, black uh, windowed screen where we can pick that up for uh, Peter. And as we do, let's go see what can we find out here. When is this communicating to us? Excellent question. Stevie just has to find it. Where did it go? There we go. So now we take a look at New York Stock Exchange, the Advanced Decline Oscillator. It is below zero, Peter. It has been below zero for two days. That sells, says sellers are the ones that are in control of the general markets out there. Um, there was a, originally a divergence. That divergent uh, led to a two-day rally. That pattern really is not so much in effect out there, at least not the way that I'd like to call it. So with regard to the Advanced Decline Oscillator, Peter, it is uh, back below the uh, zero level. That tells us that uh, sellers are the ones that are in control of the market. Of course, you didn't need Stevie to tell that to you. The next request from the Tiger's Den coming in from G-Man. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change screens. We're going to go take a look at Boeing. Ticker symbol there is BA. And as we uh, Boeing charts here populate, what do they tell us? Well, they show a nice road momentum indicator bottom. And what price has done so far um, G-Man is it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile, which for uh, Boeing is between the range of 128.03, that support, resistance 135.31. Boeing hit resistance earlier in the uh, day, and if it can close above that level, again, that level being 135.31, that would be a bullish outcome, and that would suggest a further rally. And uh, that would also take price above its weekly oscillator and change line, which is what needs to happen. So you need to get above that, close above the top of the daily profile to suggest that um, 
what we would see out here in Boeing is a further rally. On a monthly time frame, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out there. It would need a bullish reversal candle in order to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So that's what I see when I take a look at the charts for Boeing. I hope that that helps you out, you being a G-man. And uh, although not a request out there, there is a uh, NVIDIA was just uh, posted in the uh, den. So we're going to a break out here. I'll just put up those charts for NVIDIA. Let's take a quick peek, see what they're telling us. We know the semiconductor is getting absolutely hammered out there, and they're not even drinking tequila. The daily time frame negating the roads went to Decatur bottom. The weekly time frame says there could be a bottom, TD9 count, that forms between this week and the next two. That's what the NVIDIA charts are communicating to all of us. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So as, as long as we've got the NVIDIA charts, let's go ahead and complete this out here. So we know that right now, if price today closes below the low from September 29th, that's 119.46, it'll negate its Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It still has another one triggered. It would require a uh, bullish reversal candle to confirm that. We're in bar number eight on a, a weekly time frame out there. We don't know if we'll complete a TD9 count bottom. Still has to do bar number nine. It would suggest that you wouldn't get much rally inside over the next couple of weeks in NVIDIA because you'd need to close below 125.16 next Friday. Monthly time frame, but it does have potential out there. Uh, the monthly chart, you're going to form bar number nine this month. It's early in the month of October. Of course, that pattern may not complete until November uh, or may not complete at all out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at NVIDIA. There was a request if we could to take a look at uh, ticker symbol MSOS. MSOS. 
Um, so let's go put that up on the screen. I'm not familiar with that, not that I need to be familiar with it, because we're really agnostic as to what chart it is that we're looking at. But MSOS is pure U.S. cannabis ETF out there. Wow, a gigantic day that this had on uh, Thursday. Now talk about wide-ranging bars out there. And that was suggesting that price should go up and tag that 1328 level. So you got a nice TD9 count bottom that formed out here. This is from uh, Coda. That was on the uh, trading day of September 27th. Now what is it doing? It may just simply be pulling back to test support, and that would be the top of its profile, 1094. There's also support, if you take a look at the weekly time frame, price ran right up into it last week. It's between the range of 1228 and 1331. you got the potential for roads to indicator bottom on the monthly, a TD9 count potentially on the um, monthly as well. But in order for that, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's still a potential out. Nah, I take that back. Price needs to close below in order for that to happen on a monthly basis, Coda. 10:35 at month end. You're at 11:31 right now. Hey, but the bullish reversal candle would give you a nice road momentum indicator, Bob. So this has real potential. It's pulling back. I'm assuming you're looking for an entry area into MSOS. So 10:94, 10:51, 10:30, and 10:02 are the levels out there. Um, that's the best that I've got right now, folks. Stay tuned. You've got great programming lined up. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Please have a magical, marvelous, magnificent Monday. Take care, folks.